it sounds absolutely awful. When you floor the throttle, all you hear is that little four cylinder just screaming and just suffering. And it's telling me, please, I want to leave this engine compartment. I think it's fair to say that the midsize three row SUV has officially replaced the minivan. Now the Toyota Highlander Hybrid is the case in point. Underneath its truckish body lies the same platform and the same drivetrain as a Toyota Sienna minivan. As a matter of fact, the Highlander isn't as spacious as a Sienna. It's less practical than the minivan on which it's based. The towing rating is exactly the same, yet Toyota is selling three times more of these things than its own minivan. What the hell is going on? I'm gonna take this bad boy for a drive and try to figure out why on earth people prefer these things over a minivan when they have a family to carry. Let me pull out a bit of numbers for you to show you how ridiculous this SUV craze is. When I say that the Highlander isn't as spacious as the Sienna minivan, well, in terms of cargo space, when you lower all three seats, so total car cargo space combined, the Highlander will store approximately 2,070 liters of room. That's a lot of space for your cargo, but the Sienna, 2,800 liters and it's based on the same vehicle. I mean, yes, the CN is a bit longer, but it's the same platform as this, and the price is actually quite similar. Now, in terms of sales, Toyota sold in the US and Canada combined last year, approximately 50,000 Siennas. That's a lot of Siennas. How many Highlanders did they sell? More than 250,000 units. I mean, it's game over for the minivan. Now, people like these things because they look cooler than a van. I mean, young parent, parents who have you know, they have young children. They don't want to drive what their parents were driving. They don't want to be seen in a minivan because a minivan is considered boring. It's considered, I don't know, like that there's no soul. It's not adventurous. When you're driving an SUV, you're telling people that you're adventurous and you like uh, to take risks and you're active and you like to play outdoors, which is not always the case. Now this model, the Highlander Hybrid, is a very good vehicle. I mean, it's reliable, it's super fuel efficient. It uses a four-cylinder engine combined to two electric motors. I have a small one in the front, a bigger one in the rear, which allows it to be all-wheel drive. And what's interesting about its all-wheel drive system is that there's no drive shaft and no differential. It's all happening electronically on the rear wheels. But it's not a sport utility vehicle per se, meaning, I mean, that all-wheel drive system won't allow you to go off-roading. If you're stuck in a snowbank, I've tried this system in the snow, and honestly, I mean, it gets stuck pretty easily. And when it's time to tow, for instance, you want to pull like a boat or a camper, well, this thing is limited at 3,500 pounds. Now, the V6-powered Highlander will tow 5,000 pounds, but this one, 3,500 pounds, it's a good, fair number, but it's no different than a Sienna. We're witnessing an interesting shift in the way consumers perceive vehicles. The crossover went from being the cool vehicle to being kind of the boring and more lukewarm option. From behind the wheel, this thing, there's absolutely nothing exciting about the Highlander. Sure, it has a pretty funky dashboard design and some pretty cool color inserts on the seats. But I mean, there's nothing about this vehicle that allows it really to stand out from its competition. As a matter of fact, when compared to the other mid-size SUVs on the market, things juggernauts like the Honda Pilot, the Nissan Pathfinder, the Ford Explorer, the Highlander is behind in terms of cargo space. But it's a Toyota. People like this brand for its reliability and you will not have any problems with a Highlander. But, but from driving this thing, it really just feels like a minivan. It feels like this very, very rational type of vehicle that you buy because you need a lot of room. Whereas if you look at how the minivan has evolved, look at the modern minivan models that are on the market, especially the Sienna. Look how cool that thing looks. I mean, it's super futuristic. You know, it comes with a sporty flare. You can have it with a body kit if you'd like. Honda sells one with a VTEC engine. I mean, they're all rather funky and they're trying to be cool again. So the minivan, is becoming the cool parent vehicle again and the SUV, which used to be the cool car that parents didn't want to buy because they didn't want a minivan, is becoming the boring alternative. What I'm predicting is that in the next five, 10 or 20 years, the children that are riding around in these vehicles will absolutely hate the SUV and probably end up buying mid-size sedans and minivans. Please, please buy mid-size sedans. I really don't want those cars to disappear. So anyway, the Highlander. I mean, I've talked about this vehicle already. If you look back on this channel, I did a static comparison with a Nissan uh, Pathfinder, which is its direct rival. And I mean, as far as being a 
urban family vehicle. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I mean, combined fuel economy right now in winter, I'm averaging nine liters per 100 kilometers. I once saw the dashboard show me 7.5 liters per 100 kilometers in a Highlander hybrid. I mean, look at the size of this thing. 7.5 liters per 100 kilometers is the equivalent of a Toyota Corolla. But you're getting this now in a Highlander because the technology underneath the hood is basically a glorified Toyota Prius. Now, there's not, there's not that much power and ugh, it sounds absolutely awful. Now, the way this thing works is that both the gasoline and the electric motors are working together. Everything is working in harmony, so you don't need to plug it in. It's very similar to that Corolla hybrid I drove on this channel as well. So I'm not gonna go in detail with the rear of the Highlander, like cargo space and seating, because I already did all that in my other video. So I invite you to go on, on check out on this YouTube channel when I went in detail. If you wanna have all the hard numbers about the Highlander and compare it to a Pathfinder, that video has all the information you need. I wanna focus on the front section of this vehicle, because like I mentioned earlier, it has a pretty funky interior, because this is a limited XLE all-wheel drive. I have no idea what limited means. All I know is that it has a $55,000 sticker price so be careful when you buy new cars because car makers really like to add extra packages to inflate the price now what this limit is going to give you is the color inserts on the seats as you saw gray with a bit of bronze on the seats you'll have bronze as well inserts stitching here on the dashboard um, and that's pretty much it honestly there's not much about the limited that really makes it any different than a standard highlander however there's a nice contrasting uh, shade of gray there are a lot of shades of gray in this highlander it's very toyota I have darker uh, gray here lighter here it's more of like a charcoal color um, but it's all it's all well put together the build quality of this highlander is impeccable i have soft touch materials everything feels solid and of good quality so the overall layout in the highlander is good without being great i mean it gets the job done it's coarse points in some areas but it loses in some others the center console is great it's very massive very wide so it really gives me this commanding feel because if i'm a father or a mother and i'm driving this with children yelling i want to feel secure i want to feel in control of my family shuttle and you do have this feeling in the highlander two large uh, cup holders i have a standard mechanical gear lever no push buttons that's all also enjoyable in this day and age. Um, I have the drive mode selector right here. It doesn't really do anything. I have an eco mode, normal and sport. Honestly, just leave this thing in normal. No matter what you're gonna do, this thing's gonna be fuel efficient, no matter what. And sport mode won't even do anything. This thing is gutless anyways. You have EV mode because yes, it's possible to drive the Highlander in fully electric mode, but only during very short distances, um, only under about 50 kilometers an hour because the electric motor, the, the battery isn't very big in this thing. The electric motor, is was there to assist the gasoline one to save more fuel. Now the center console is interesting in the Highlander because I can't open it like a, like a conventional one. I have this tiny opening here on the top. It's not very wide, but it does give me a two layer shelf system, a small shelf on the top that I can move around to put my gear. And it's very deep cavernous uh, a section to drop, uh, for, instance, for instance, water bottles or anything else. I also have a power outlet uh, right here inside to collect some kind of equipment. Now, speaking of power outlets, I have more of these in the front. I have three USB ports, two of them being USB-C. Nice compartment up here to throw my phone or other types of gear down here as well. A little compartment up in my wallet in the bottom, phone on top, you could do the other way around. And another compartment here on the passenger side. So there's a lot of storage, a lot of storage solutions in the Highlander. That proves how much Toyota wanted to make this a family-oriented vehicle. I mean, people can just throw gear all over the place in this car. It'll just take it in. Now, the infotainment system has always been kind of a Toyota problem. Um, it's not bad per se, but very much like the Corolla I drove, there's a lot of complexity in this system. Um, the, the menu feels old, the graphics are dated, and what I continue wondering about Toyota vehicles is the menu button and the home, I mean, home never really means home. You need to press menu to be on the home menu. They still haven't corrected that. Um, and there's some lag, you press on an icon, it takes a while before it reacts. What I suggest is connect it to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. You'll at least get that interface and you'll get much better graphics and a much better user experience. 
For the rest, it's pretty traditional Toyota uh, switch gear. I mean, everything feels of good quality. There's nothing too flashy, nothing too gimmicky. Um, the dashboard design on the Highlander Hybrid um, is really uh, focused on fuel economy. You're getting a score depending on how green you were. It's showing you in real time what's being what's being used. Are you using electricity? Are you using gasoline or both? It's actually quite fascinating because even on the highway when you're coasting, the vehicle will literally switch off the gasoline engine and run only on electricity. That's pretty cool. So I haven't really answered the question now, have I? Why are people buying SUVs over minivans when they're not necessarily better? Well, it's an image problem. People want to look good. They want to look adventurous, active, rugged, and they don't want to drive what their parents were driving. It's as simple as that. I mean, the Highlander is not a bad vehicle. In hybrid form, it's actually quite interesting. Super reliable, low running costs, cheap on gas. I mean, what can go wrong? But between you and me, if you were to choose between this and a Sienna, Come on, take the Sienna. It may be a minivan, but look how cool that thing is. And you'll get more cargo space, the same towing rating, and you'll get sliding doors as well. To me, that's a win-win proposition.